Thank you for inviting us today, this evening, I should say. I know we've all, as parents, have had our day at work, and now we're here to find out information for our student or child. So thank you so much. Again, my name is Latasha Graham, Assistant Director of Outreach and Recruitment at Valencia College. I'm here to make sure that you're aware of any of the degree pathways that we have to offer at Valencia. And Valencia College is one of the great 28. We have 28 state colleges in the state of Florida, and we're the second largest of those 28. Uh, so I'm here to share some information with you. Um, feel free to ask any questions if you have them as we go along. Let's see if I can. All right, so with Valencia College, we actually have first that we'd like to start off with is so we can dispel any myths or any barriers that we may think Valencia may have for our students. What would you say the minimum GPA for admission to Valencia College is? Any can guess if you would like to in the chat. And if you're not able to, I can go ahead and give you the 2.8. Okay. 2.5. Good guesses. Awesome. Thank you for participating. The actual, oh, 3.0. The actual answer is there is no minimum GPA required for acceptance to Valencia College. All students need to do is graduate with their high school diploma or GED. So technically, if the GPA is, let's say, a minimum 2.0 that they need to graduate from high school, that's what Valencia College will accept. So whatever that GPA is for high school diploma, we want to have all students know that they can start at Valencia College and go anywhere. So GPA will not be a barrier. We also don't have a requirement for standardized testing. If students started the ninth grade in the state of Florida for high school, they're not required to do standardized testing for admission to Valencia either. And there's also no citizenship requirements as far as uh, information that you may need to provide for citizenship. We don't want to have any barriers for students that may need to get into their access with us. I'm so sorry. This here just changed my screen really quickly. Not sure how that happened. Okay, here we are. So with Valencia College, we have open access for all students. So if you're coming to Valencia College, whether as a prospective student, which is a student who's interested in our institution, but hasn't quite made the decision on whether to come to Valencia, um, we have open access for students who are looking to start at Valencia and transfer to a university, such as our partnership with UCF, University of Central Florida. Accreditation also matters. So we make sure that our students know that our classes are offered at a very high standard. So those credits can transfer to another university, as well as those credits can be looked at as a valuable employment opportunity for anyone that's looking to hire the students as they build upon their education. So we just like to make sure that students are very aware of the open access opportunities that they have at Valencia. Another trivia. So which counties in Central Florida does Valencia College have campuses in? Let's see. Orange, yes. So yes, we have campuses in our 10 campus locations. Valencia College is throughout Orange and Osceola County. So not quite Seminole, um, but we do have a sister love for Seminole State College that's in Seminole County. Um, but for Valencia, we are in Orange and Osceola County. We're spread out through 10 convenient campuses where students are able to learn conveniently close to home, close to their work or employment, or even if you would like to return to work or start your first degree with us, we can be close to home for you as well. We offer virtual courses, hybrid courses, and we also have four dedicated Center for Accelerated Skills training locations for students to maybe just learn a certification if they would like to go that route. So there's a variety of options for students depending on where they live in Orange and Osceola County. 
Now, the pathways that we have at Valencia College vary. No matter what pathway that the students would like to go through, we would like to make sure students at Valencia are measured by the success of who we include, not by who we exclude. So no matter where they would like to start at Valencia, whether it's a certification in accelerated skills training, which is a going to be as short as two week program, could be certified a truck driver, or you can have as long as 28 weeks for welding. You also have technical certifications that we offer. We also offer, of course, our standard associates degree, which takes 60 credits to complete. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what those associates look like. Um, and then, of course, students can move into their bachelor's degree if they want to go on. We do have six bachelor degrees at Valencia College, one of them being nursing. So that's a very popular uh, degree pathway. I know many students may not know that we have a bachelor's in nursing at Valencia College. We have a bachelor's in bachelor's of applied science and uh, organizational leadership, as well as electrical computer engineering technology. So there are a few options for students not only to do their two years at what we could say 60 credits at Valencia College, but also continue into their um, bachelor's degree at 120 credits and so forth. Of course, graduate school is an option. The more degrees that you earn, the more money you make. Um, but we want students to know that they have an option to transfer to our partner school, University of Central Florida. But also we have articulation agreements with the other 12 public state university syst school systems. So that's USF or UF, FAMU, um, all of those that we have in the state, students can transfer from Valencia College um, from those programs as too. So here's a quick breakdown of our Associate of Arts uh, degree pathways. These are transfer opportunities for students to take their 60 credits at their pace, and then they can go into any of these areas that we call meta majors for students to transfer and finish their bachelor's at the level that they choose. So they can start off by taking their general education courses in these areas, which is going to save them at least 40% of the cost of the general education that they may have taken at a university. Um, so we're saving them uh, first, saving you the money, but then of course, we're also letting them have time to explore the general education opportunities. It is a fact that many students change their major as they get to college because they start in one area and may be very interested in something else as they go along their journey. So we allow you to change your major and explore. And what better way to change your major and explore those opportunities when it's not costing you? Um, so we like to let students know these are the areas that you can go into for your degree pathways for an Associate of Arts. I think I do have a question in the chat. And do students finishing uh, Valencia need an application to UCF? We actually uh, will be talking about that in a moment about our Direct Connect program, where students do not actually, um, it's not a direct application, it's through our Direct Connect program that they're offered guaranteed admission to transfer to UCF. So I'll make sure that I highlight that. Thank you for your question. Now, you'll also see Associate of Science. This is another opportunity that is an associate's degree, but it is also 60 credits. But this Associate of Science is not specializing in the transfer opportunity like the Associate of Arts AA. The AS is specializing in a career-focused skill. For example, nursing, engineering, hospitality, culinary. You can see these are specific skill sets on the screen in these areas where students are going to learn a specialized skill to go directly into employment after their 60 credits, or they can continue on into their bachelor's at a university. But with the Associate of Science career pathway, they have the option of work or transferring versus the Associate of Arts. They have the most option is the transfer option for them to take. In addition to the ones that you see here for our AS programs, here's an additional AS degrees that we offer for hospitality, as I mentioned, public safety. I'm not sure if you knew we had a school of public safety for those wanting to go into law enforcement, correction officer, or fire science, and also social behavioral sciences as well. Now, to mention what we have in regards to our certifications, I did mention that a few of our certifications are as short as two weeks. That would be our commercial truck driving or commercial vehicle operator, if you will. 
to as long as 28 weeks, but still weeks long that students can go into one of our programs and graduate and go directly into a deployment. So you have advanced manufacturing, construction, healthcare, transportation and logistics, and business and information technology. We also have a few of these certifications where students can get their feet wet, get a job in the industry, and then also take the credits from the accelerated skills training certification into an associate of science degree pathway if they like to continue to earn more credits and earn a higher credential. Now, for our students who might be in need of ESOL courses, we also have language programs at Valencia. So this is where students normally would start if they need ESOL first, and then they would gradually uh, progress into our associate degree pathways. Here is Direct Connect. So not sure if anyone knows, here's a quick trivia again. This is a bonus trivia, I guess. Does anyone know what the Valencia College mascot is? Have you heard the news? I'll see if someone comes around, but if they go from being a Valencia College boop, to being a UCF Knight, that's what we want. Um, UCF Direct Connect is the program, and this is an opportunity for students to get into one, Valencia College, saving money. Um, again, no GPA required. And when they're ready to transfer to UCF, there is no GPA required. There's no SAT required. They are automatically guaranteed acceptance upon the fact that they have an associate's degree from Valencia. On that fact, they also have regional campuses at Valencia College. So out of the 10 campuses that we mentioned, there are three campuses that are regional campuses. And regional campuses are West, East, and Osceola. That means that you have UCF Direct Connect full-time staff on those campuses to assist our Valencia students before they even get to graduation from Valencia to know that they're aligned with their pathway to transfer, everything is in order, the application is done, all of the transcripts are submitted, so they have one-on-one -on -one assistance with a success coach, and they can also at the regional campus, if they choose to, Possibly if the bachelor courses that they're taking are offered there, take their bachelor courses at that same Valencia campus for UCF though. So they kind of save a little bit on the fact that maybe not driving to the main UCF campus or possibly not having to pay for parking fees. Uh, Cause at Valencia, we do not have any uh, parking fees, student identification, student ID fees. So they save on some of those little quirky areas that can really add up later. We are very much about the academics and making sure that we provide a high standard of education to our students uh, in an affordable manner and convenient manner, but we are about fun as well. We want students to feel like they are well-rounded, that they feel a sense of belonging on the campus, so they're connected to their professors and their classmates. We have over 180 clubs and organizations, um, so they can either join a club that's already in existence or they can start their own club if it's not in existence. We also have student government association. So if you have someone in your family who's very outspoken, um, maybe going into the political realm, they might wanna join our SGA um, club. Also, UFIT is an intramural sport program. So it is not division sports at Valencia, but we do offer opportunities for students to compete amongst campuses. And then study abroad is a awesome opportunity for students to get out of their comfort zone, travel while they're chaperoned with one of the Valencia faculty members and go with their classmates, all while earning college credits in the class that they're taking. So if they're taking environmental science and they study abroad to Argentina, it's an opportunity for them to learn while traveling. Work study is an also great opportunity for any student who's going to college. Through FAFSA, if they put their interested in the work study program, FAFSA will see if they screen them to see if they're eligible, and if so, they could have a position on campus. That is so much more easier and flexible to have a student employment opportunity while you're on campus as a student as well. It's easier to get to class and to get to work because it's on the same campus. Uh, possibly you don't have hours where you're working very late because the college is closed at a certain time. 
and on the weekends. Um, you have a lot more flexibility with your supervisor on downtime because they know you're a student and you may need study time. Um, we do have a maximum of 20 hours per week for work study students, but a state minimum wage, which is I think $13 an hour. So it's a great opportunity for students. Valencia Volunteers is a, another way for students to get involved if they want to make sure that they're just being um, involved in their community and making an impact. As far as financial opportunities, we have many. One of them is the Senate Honors College for students, not just GPA based, uh, but we are looking at the well rounded student who wants to have an enhanced uh, learning experience. Our average class size at Valencia College is about 23 to 25 students, and Center of Honors College is maybe about 15 to 16 students. Um, so you get the smaller classes, you get the extra stole at graduation, recognition. Center of Honors College is currently hosting information sessions for students who are interested in possibly applying. In addition, we also offer student support services. The services that you see here on the bullets are offered to our students um, from academic counseling to mental health counseling. We also offer all of our students with the Valencia ID are able to ride the Lynx bus for free. So if they have to travel throughout Central Florida, even if it's not to a campus, maybe it's on the weekend, they can show their Valencia ID. We also provide tutoring, which is exceptional to have, especially before you get to finals. So we want our students to succeed before it's too late, before the grades are submitted. Um, so making sure that they're aware of all of our services, including the Office for Students with Disabilities, for students who might have a 504 or IEP plan. This is probably the area the parents want to hear the most about is how much is all of this going to cost me? <laughs> so we are going to talk a little bit about the cost at Valencia just by breaking it down. We can see Tommy who is kind of hands down, shoulders down. Uh, he went to uh, a route of going directly to a university, which is great, but we want to encourage scholarships if you're going that route, Bright Futures, Florida Prepaid, all the scholarships if you can. But then you see Jackie, who's very happy. She can see that she uh, started her pathway at Valencia first, and then she plans to transfer to a university. So for Valencia College students, if you're a Florida resident, which means that you're parents, so this is where you definitely come in, because based on the state, we go by the parents if the student is under the age of 24. So based on the parent, if you've been in the state of Florida for a year or more, you receive in-state tuition for the student, and that would be $3,000 per year for our associate's degree, a total of $6,000 for the associate's degree. Very good. And that's usually mostly funded by financial aid if you qualify for hopefully the maximum of the Pell Grant. If not, we accept scholarships, of course, Senate of Honors College that we mentioned. We also have an additional scholarship that I'll talk about in a moment. Um, but just letting you know what the cost is looking like for the 60 credit associate degree. Just to give a little bit of comparison, if you do compare us to the university meal plans, we're less on our cost of tuition for Valencia College. Even if the student is a full-time 15 credit seeking student in their term, they're paying less than what they would pay for a meal plan at a university. So we're definitely affordable, valuable, cost efficient, and hopefully saving on the budget so the students can have more pocket money to spend on food. <laughs> Another trivia, does it matter when our students apply for financial aid? Is it important or can should they just apply whenever? Any specific time frame they should apply? No, yeah, okay, so October 1st, if they're a senior, that's the time frame that they should be applying if they're going to be applying for FAFSA at any college that they plan to go to. So October the 1st is what we're uh, encouraging. Of course, apply as soon as you can if you know you're planning to come to Valencia. Put down Valencia's college school code in the FAFSA. It takes about six to eight weeks to process, so we want students to have the time. Our application doesn't take that long to process, but FAFSA can, so we want students to know that 
uh, to prioritize not just applying to college early, but also applying for FAFSA early because applying to college early also means early access to class registration. So maybe getting the classes that they really want. The other way to fund the education at Valencia is scholarship universe. This is not GPA based. This is where you go into our portal as a student once you're accepted and you do one application and it will screen you to see what our students are matched to. So then you can see here, this is a screenshot of an actual student who did the uh, scholarship universe application and they were matched to 107 scholarships. But you can see they also applied for three. So there's money sitting on the table for students um, more than enough at Valencia. Now, taking the next step at Valencia College means different things for different students. So to address the dual enrollment questions that we do have in the chat, for dual enrollment, dual enrollment requires a 3.0 GPA. Um, as far as the 3.0 GPA, dual enrollment right now is also in the open period of accepting applications for the fall uh, students who will be coming in for fall term, which will be August. So students who are coming in for dual enrollment for the uh, fall term, um, they are looking at the 3.0. There are specific assessment scores that they're looking for on the PERT. Um, the dual enrollment application is free, um, so you do not have to uh, pay for that application. It is online through our Valencia College website, um, and the students have to have the signature of their guidance counselor and their parent or guardian to approve of them to take their courses. Uh, the courses that will be eligible for dual enrollment students will only be general education courses. So uh, sticking to the Associative Arts area, AA area, it would just be the basic general education, science, English, math, history, um, those courses. In case the student wants to continue at Valencia, they can after their senior year. Um, if they don't get all the way up to 60 credits by the time that they're done with high school, or if they want to take those general education courses from dual enrollment and transfer them into another university. So that's why they're uh, restricted to stay in kind of that bubble of the general education courses so they don't have any transferring issues. Um, as far as the deadlines and open period, it like I mentioned, it is open right now. I'm going to take a peek one moment at my um, phone. Um, it is open right now and it actually is accepting applications. I want to say the deadline for testing is March 6th. So um, for Valencia College, that is one of the areas that um, they're very strict on for dual enrollment because they have to get the students in the system if they're planning to do um, those courses. So yes, it is currently open. Deadline would be March the 6th. And the assessment deadline will be April 14th. So um, I would say March the 6th is your deadline, um, making sure that the application is in by that date. And then after that, they will um, provide instructions. There is, in addition, if you go to Valencia College website um, and for dual enrollment, there is an information session that dual enrollment will be hosting on February 21st at 6 p.m. It's a virtual information session. Um, so you can actually uh, sit in with the dual enrollment staff if you have additional questions or um, specific questions. Um, so we can make sure that you have that information um, in the chat. Um, I can probably type that in for you, but that is at our Valencia College website. And if you go type in dual enrollment, it will take you directly to that website. Any other questions before I move into our final step? No, sure, no problem. Yes, we are the Puma, I see it. Sorry, I just saw it. <laughs> Valencia College Pumas. Awesome. So this is how you stay in touch with us at Valencia College. We are on social media. We are at all of the high schools. I was at Apopka High School today. We do application workshops with our team. We waive the Valencia College application fee. So if they're a senior, so not dual enrollment because dual enrollment is no application fee, but if they're a senior applying to Valencia um, and they're not Okay, again, dual enrollment, there is a $35 application fee for students. 
So at our application workshops at the high schools, we will waive that application fee for them. Um, you can also reach out to us if you need a waiver at the email that you see if you need us. There's also events that we host. We host on-campus information sessions where you can come and visit our campus. You can tour our campus. There's 10 campus locations. So just depending on what your student may be interested in pursuing for their career pathway. We also have a future students website for students who are maybe just navigating which college you're interested in and if Valencia College is the right choice for them based on what they're learning best based on what they would like to pursue for their career. Um, so we want to make sure that you know that we're here. Are there any questions that we can maybe address while we have a little bit of extra time? I'll put the, or I'll see if I can put the, Valencia College website in the chat. So uh, just to clarify, yes, March 6th is the deadline for the application for dual enrollment. A testing deadline for PERT scores is April 14th. However, you, you would have to get in the application by March 6th to even be considered to be to submit the scores by April 14th. I hope that helped answer the question. So if you go to valenciacollege.edu and in the search box, you can type in dual enrollment. As for dual enrollment, oh, great question, what grade? So for dual enrollment, sixth grade, you can actually uh, have a 3.0 in high school credits. So typically we don't have many middle schoolers, but if say the middle schooler had an algebra one class, which is considered a high school course, and they pass that with a B, a 3.0 GPA average, they are, technically eligible for dual enrollment, sixth grade and up. Um, as far as passing um, the PERT, so for students who may be passed uh, two sections but not one, you can always retake, uh, but you should retake before the deadline of uh, the testing deadline that's due for dual enrollment. So you can you can retake within the time frame um, before the deadline and resubmit uh, an updated score. I have a question. What happens if you take the PERT and pass it, but you didn't submit an application? An application for dual enrollment, um, it's still time. You don't, you have until March the 6th to submit a dual enrollment application. So yes, March the 6th. And again, the date for the Valencia College dual enrollment information session is February 21st at 7, I'm sorry, at 6 p.m. If you go to valenciacollege.edu, type in dual enrollment in the search box, you'll see the information to uh, attend or register for the virtual dual enrollment information session.
I see a couple of questions in here about if there are online dual enrollment course options for students. Um, and then there's a question in here about, um, I guess, middle school age students that are taking dual enrollment and if they're allowed to attend on campus alone. Okay, thank you so much. I'm I'm seeing if I I'm, I think I'm seeing a few of them jump. <laughs> thank you. Um, so as for uh, middle school students taking classes on campus, they are allowed with approval of their parents um, being accompanied in the vicinity. So if the parent is on campus in their vehicle or on campus um, at their 16 years of age and under, they should be accompanied by a parent, and there will be usually an, an appointment that you have with a dual enrollment advisor to sit and talk through. Um, the parameters of that since they're under the age of 16 years, um, 16 years old. And as far as online courses for dual enrollment, you do have the option of taking virtual or in person. So the student can choose what they would like. You also have the option of being part time or full time. So part time would be considered what we call maybe two courses, which is six credits, or the student can take. Um, Four courses, which would be 12 credits, which we would we consider full time at the college. Um, it's really up to them and their pace of how they would like to take their courses. Um, some students only like to be part time because they're very active in school um, and they want to have, you know, practice after school, whatever the sport they may be, or some students go full time depending on their uh, ability. Um, I would say that if they're not of driving age, that that will be definitely on the parent if they're going to be taking any in person courses on campus to get them to campus. So. Virtual would be the other option um, that is allowed. There was another question. I'm not sure if you got it yet, which was about um, if there's a maximum number of credits you can take through dual enrollment. I know there are some high schools that offer a program where you can earn your AA. So is there a maximum number of credits you can take for dual enrollment? Yes, yeah, so each term they allow a maximum of 12 credits. So four courses um, would make them what we call full time. So each term they allow 12 credits. The student um, is allowed to also take summer term after um, their first, I would say, year in dual enrollment. They can't start dual enrollment in the summer on their first term. But once they've been in dual enrollment come the next following summer, they can take summer. So that can expedite their time. Um, what we're looking forward to um, for dual enrollment students is the opportunity for them to attain an associate's degree for free. So that's 60 credits. So if they can attain 60 credits, um, so if they started dual enrollment by sophomore year of high school and did full time, they could by senior year have a full 60 credit associate's degree, depending on how they took their courses um, full time. If they did part time, they could end maybe with 40 credits. Um, they would still only have maybe three more years considered at uh, the pace of getting a bachelor's degree. Um, so that would expedite their time. My son did dual enrollment from Okoe High School um, and he expedited his time at FIU by only having to do three years because he finished with 46 credits from Valencia for dual enrollment. Well, that brings up the next question. Um, there was a parent who was wondering, there isn't a direct connect program to the University of Florida, but do you have a relationship with the University of Florida? Do they accept those dual enrollment credits? Great question. So we have a relationship, uh, what we call articulation agreements. The articulation agreements are with all 12 Florida State public universities. So University of Florida, as well as FSU, USF, all 12 of those institutions uh, work with us as a state college to transfer our students in with our Associate of Arts or what we call um, our uh, general education credits. So that's also the reason why dual enrollment restricts the uh, minors in our high schools and middle schools to taking only general education. Because if they choose to take dual enrollment at Valencia, but choose to, after high school, go directly into, let's say, University of Florida, those general education courses will be accredited and transferable to their institution without question. Um, so, you know, they can't take an, art, you know, an elective of yoga because University of Florida may not take that. So we want them to stay in the parameters of what will be accepted in a transferable manner, which is why they're uh, uh, in the parameters of taking just the Associate of Arts, which is our general education area. 
Great, thank you. Yeah. There's another student who's interested um, in learning what high school courses would be helpful if they're going to pursue a nursing degree from Valencia. Which high school courses? That's a great question. Um, I would recommend if they're able to do dual enrollment, um, it would be very helpful to take the prerequisites um, that are offered under general education through dual enrollment, if that makes sense. So if a uh, prerequisite for nursing is biology, you can take that as a science in dual enrollment. And that's also counting your credit for dual enrollment, but also purposes as a prerequisite for nursing. So um, killing two birds with one stone, if you will. Um, but I will say that taking your sciences um, and your maths um, at B level 3.0 average is what they're looking for for you to pass the prerequisites at uh, Valencia. So once you can get through the prerequisites of the sciences, there's I believe eight prerequisite courses. There is a science, an intro to nursing, and those courses need to be passed with a B average or 3.0 GPA. Then you would be considered for admission into um, the nursing program. Awesome. And I just dropped a link, uh, Rohan, into your private chat for those nursing prerequisites. Um, so there was another question here about um, taking dual enrollment courses over the summer. So again, Kevin, you know, you, it, it, you can take dual enrollment classes over the summer if your child has already started dual enrollment this spring. Um, I do not believe, because my own daughter's at Valencia, that summer registration is concluded. Um, so there is still time to register for dual enrollment for the summer, but again, only if your child's already in dual enrollment. If your child hasn't started dual enrollment, they would begin that process in the fall, and then they could take classes fall, um, spring, and summer. Yes, correct. Okay. Thank you um, for... Uh, being my uh, moderator, I love the question and, you know, tagging. <laughs> I'm trying my best because it's blowing up over here. So I let's... love it. I mean, that's great. I, I'm glad I got the wheels spinning. I, I see one about the study abroad options. Honestly, yeah. they, they changed my semester. So uh, it's gone from Peru, London, Argentina, Brazil. Um, they changed by semester depending on the professor and the course. Um, as for hospitality, they normally go with the Europe area um, and culinary because they're they're over there just basically having the time of their lives tasting chocolates and <laughs> but they do take the trips and culin uh, trips and culinary every year. They take their students to somewhere in Europe to experience something in that area of Greece and um, Rome and Paris, France, all of that. So um, this is a, another really interesting question. I think some people get confused about this part. So there isn't a minimum number of classes you need to take in high school to qualify for dual enrollment. What you have to have is a 3.0 GPA. So for, I'm gonna give the example from my own daughter's experience. My daughter took algebra one for high school credit as a seventh grader. So whether she knew it or not, she started her high school GPA right at that moment. And so if she got a B, she has a 3.0 and I would then be qualified to do dual enrollment. Is it the best option for your child? Well, that's something you'll have to talk about with your school counselor. But your child has to have taken at least one high school credit class, either at high school or in middle school, and they have to have a 3.0 GPA in those high school classes. So whether that's algebra, geometry, or whatever else they're taking, they need to get that 3.0, okay? So that, I know that there's uh, lots of confusion about that sometimes, so hopefully that clears that up, Shanika. Um, there's also a great question, which I think as a parent, I, I was really confused by. If I take dual enrollment classes, do those count toward my graduation requirements or do I have to take like all the high school classes and then dual enrollment? No, you, you're, no. yeah. So like if you're dual enrolling for English, that counts as an English credit for high school. The idea right. is not that you're doing double duty. We're not, we're not trying to kill the poor kiddos. Okay. So that's, <laughs> that's not the idea there. Right. Um, so it definitely is an opportunity. I've had a uh, senior award ceremonies that I've attended and the senior is receiving their high school diploma, but they're also receiving their associate's degree at the same time. And that is a great 
great, great feeling because you know it was free. <laughs> but also, as uh, as she mentioned, it is not going to be double duty. So if they're doing dual enrollment, it is suffice to take care of all the requirements for high school requirements well while they're doing that dual enrollment course. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. So there's also um, a question here about can you attend Valencia without the PERT? So if you passed the SAT and ACT, can you attend without the PERT? As a dual enrollment student, you have to submit one of the test scores, PERT, ACT, or SAT. As a senior coming into Valencia College, there is no uh, standardized testing requirement as long as the senior started ninth grade in the state of Florida um, for high school. So um, it just depends. If they're dual enrollment, yes, testing is required. If they are not dual enrollment and just coming to apply to Valencia directly as a senior in high school, there is no testing requirement as long as they start at ninth grade in high school here in Florida. Great, thank you so much. And that 3.0, it is for dual enrollment cumulative, right? It's not just in core classes, correct? Right. All right. Thank right. you, Latasha. Yes, All right. and, and I wanted to also, I'm sorry. Oh, I ahead. wanted to make sure I mentioned, um, as, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, um, about the, uh, the question we just had right before that. Um, oh, was it about oh, taking the high school PERT. class? Mm -hmm. For PERT, mm -hmm. yes, just to mention for PERT. Because I don't want anyone, as far as the seniors, um, who might, you know, understand that we don't require testing. Um, if you did not start ninth grade here in high school in Florida, so you were somewhere else for ninth grade, so now you're like, oh boy, I got to submit testing because I wasn't here for ninth grade. Please know that the testing is not a score play, a score pass or fail. So the testing is only to see where you scored so we can place you in the proper courses, but we're not looking at the score to say, oh, no, you don't pass getting in at Valencia. So I just want to make sure that's clear in case you weren't here for ninth grade. A lot of you have asked as well about where you can take the PERT. So I do just want to share um, that in addition to being able to take it at Valencia, um, you know, most of our high schools do offer the PERT, um, whether it's to all students or a subset of students. So please check with your child's school counselor if you're not sure if they've had the ability to take the PERT, um, because most, as I said, most of our classes do, um, or most of our high school how our high schools do offer the PERT. And we also at the schools, um, our high schools specifically, um, not middle schools, unfortunately, but at high schools, we do um, have a great partnership with OCPS. Uh, we have our college transition counselors that we partner with in my department in outreach and recruitment and the career college specialists. So they are amazing liaisons that um, we work very closely with. So if you are a high school parent um, at one of our local high schools, please reach out, let me know. Um, we'd be happy to make sure that you are in contact with um, the folks that we work with very closely to make sure your uh, student is on the right track. Absolutely. And if you are not familiar with your students college and career counselor, you should get to know them and be let them be your best friend because they can help you guide through the process. So um, another question about the PERT, I, I, uh, I have to be honest with you, I'm going to need you to answer this one. So there are three <laughs> sections of the PERT, the reading, the writing, and the math. Yes. If a child is um, t passing two of the three, so let's say they pass the two uh, reading and writing ones, can they take English classes but not math, or do they have to pass the whole shebang? I believe it's the whole shebang. I, think I, so believe, too. I believe it is the whole shebang because they are going to be again having they have to take the general education courses, which includes uh, some form of math. So I don't think they can get around those core subjects because um, okay. it's almost like a prerequisite. So if they have to, let's say, start off by taking um, college algebra, that may be a prerequisite to biology. Right. Um, right. Yeah. One more question that's just come in is I know we talked about um, with dual enrollment, the goal is, of course, to take those general education courses. But if a student is not interested in transferring to a four year college and wants to use that dual enrollment time to take a cosmetology course, is that allowable or does that need to be done through another institution? 
Very good question. So we focus on our um, associate uh, of arts degree pathway for dual enrollment. Uh, we don't allow the students to do certification um, type trade credits, if you will. So our recommendation is that they're looking into any type of um, technical skill trade in that sense of cosmetology, we would refer them to Orange Technical College and we would have them take their credits at one of the local feeder campuses for Orange Technical College that feeds to their high school. However, we have Valencia College, what we call Tech Express Advisors. And Valencia College has placed those Tech Express Advisors at the technical colleges for Orange Technical College. So they work with the seniors when they're ready to graduate to say, okay, you finish this amount of credits at the Orange Technical and it was in this area, you can actually take some of those credits and take them into your associates at Valencia. It's kind of like bringing like in- a your, hybrid. Yeah, it very much so is. The only caveat is Valencia does not have any form of cosmetology. So if they did a technical certification of cosmetology, my recommendation would always be for our students to come into an associate of science and business where they can have maybe business and small management as their major, owning their own business, own salon, if that's where they're looking to, to pursue. Um, but that's a great question. We would definitely want to recommend them anything in the technical trade area to Orange Technical College and then associate degrees um, Valencia. Absolutely. And I know that I think that's great advice, honestly, because um, I, I said the same thing to my own daughter. I have four daughters and one of them wanted to go into cosmetology. And I said, you need to make sure you get a business degree or something or an accounting degree so that you can support that. Um, yes. So entrepreneurship, there, all of that. Right. I know. <laughs> but I did place a link in the chat to our Orange Technical College dual enrollment um, information for parents. So again, parents, dual enrollment is for any college, right? Valencia is one college. Orange Technical College is also a college. And so you can dual enroll with them. Same process. You go to your guidance counselor. They can help you through that. Okay. Um, there, they do have a specific cosmetology program, but that is not normally part of their dual enrollment program. That's something that you would, um, you could potentially take the courses over the summer um, or they could also um, do them directly after they graduate. And those are actually on the West campus. And I will put a link there as well for you. That's very good to know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think that also for Orange Technical College, the GPA is 2.0 or 2.5. So that it's is a correct. Different yeah, a different GPA also for admission for the Orange Technical College dual enrollment. I did see a question from Sandra. I'm sorry, I missed that, Sandra. You said your son is a senior and he applied. Um, when would he know about his acceptance? Um, the acceptance is automatic. So as long as he graduates from his high school, he is admitted. Um, he, If it's been at least five days since he applied and submitted his application, he can now move on into the next steps, which is creating his Atlas account, which is his student portal. It has all of his information as far as um, financial aid, scholarships that we talked about tonight, how to apply to those scholarships, registering for new student orientation. So everything is in the Atlas account um, if he wants to move to that step. Um, so he's in a great spot to be ahead of time. And then when the time comes, he'll have new student orientation and usually later spring, and then he can start whichever term he chooses to start, whether that's uh, summer term B, which is the end of June. Um, it's a shorter term, goes by in six weeks. Um, or if he chooses to start in fall, which is August, which is the normal term time of 16 weeks. Um, so it's uh, really up to him if he's at the Atlas point or not, but I would recommend definitely applying for the scholarships that we mentioned tonight from honors to scholarship universe um, and of course the FAFSA. So I, I just want to answer this question again, because I feel like it's um, come up a few times and I get it because it is confusing guys. So I'm just going to go through this middle school piece one more time um, for everybody. So if your child is in eighth grade and they took a high school class already, probably algebra one, geometry, algebra two, or physical science, 
as long as they have a 3.0 in those high school classes that they took, because you don't get a GPA for middle school classes, right? Um, and that would be basically a B average. Then they can talk with their guidance counselor and make the decision about if dual enrollment is the best fit for them. Okay, but technically the requirement is as long as they have a 3.0 in their high school classes they took in middle school, they're good to go. Okay. All right. And then um, ooh, another one. See, this is not my area. Dual enrollment. Does that work for a homeschooled student? Yes, they do have dual enrollment for homeschool and as well as private school. It does work a little different, I believe, only on the side of possibly the books. But I don't want to be quoted on that because I believe under public school, the books are covered by stipend and voucher. Um, yes. Homeschool and private, I believe there, there could possibly be um, a cost there. I don't want to say yes or no. Um, so, but I do want to say yes, homeschool students are eligible for dual enrollment. As far as the cost of books, that's the only area that I'm not for sure, but I would recommend um, the virtual information session they have on February 21st. Um, that dual enrollment staff will be hosting. It's at 6 p.m. So kind of like this, just logging on virtually, but I think that would be a great time to see if that specific scenario can be addressed. Awesome, thank you You so also much. can reach out to them personally as well. You don't have to, you know, say it, <laughs> put it on virtual session. You don't have to wait for that February 21st date. They do have a, a department as well um, where they have a phone line and email um, if you want to reach out them tomorrow. <laughs> Um, Ray, I put a link in the box to your um, Orange County Virtual School counselors, so you can uh, choose one of those. They, um, their counselors also do the college and career specialist role. Um, and again, for uh, Christina, is if you're at the middle school, you can speak directly with the middle school counselor. The middle school counselor can help you with dual enrollment, okay? If you have any, you know, real questions or concerns or um, you're really feeling confused about that, you can always reach out to our student services department um, at OCPS, and I can put the link in the chat there for you as well. We have a team that is dedicated to academic services, and they can definitely assist you um, with that process. Um, we have a lead middle school guidance counselor, and that is, uh, her name is Tara Thorne. Now, again, I would say that this is, if you if you can't get an answer at your school, this is not the first line of defense, but um, she is the district lead middle school counselor, and she can assist you if that's an issue, okay? Um, the second link for OCVS. So hold on a second. Let me see if I can recopy that. I think I accidentally sent these to the wrong person. So, sorry about that, guys. All right. So here is, um, give me just a second. We're all in it together, friends. So let's right, just, right. Let's just we get there. We definitely are. Yes, we are. Um, okay. And then here is the information about the lead middle school guidance counselor. And again, this is like a backup if you are not able to get the answer or uh, connect with somebody at your school. You should always start with your school first. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are in the home stretch here, guys. We only have five minutes left. And at this point, Latasha has answered so many questions. She is being so wonderful. We're so grateful for her time. So, oh, uh, no, I appreciate it. I've been at Valencia 12, 13 years. I'm a parent of a dual enrollment student. So, I'm in their trenches with you. So, if there's anything else that you all need to ask, please utilize my time while we have six minutes. <laughs> yep. So dual enrollment classes in the summer, um, yes, you can, but remember that's only if your kid is already in dual enrollment in the spring or the fall. You can't start in the summer, but the dual enrollment classes that are available are just whatever classes are in the catalog for the summer. So if English is being offered at on Monday, then that's what's being offered. So it's whatever is available for summer. And just like um, college kids, you can take 
you might remember from when you were in college, you can take the long summer term or you can take the short summer term, which is maybe only four weeks, or you can take the long one that is six or eight weeks. So you can make those decisions again with your child's school counselor. Um, and um, dual enrollment in the summer only if you are already participating in dual enrollment in the fall or spring. Can you take all of your classes online or do you have to go to campus? Well, I believe you can craftily take your classes online. And I say that because my own daughter who is currently at Valencia graduating in May, thank you, Lord. Um, she is, uh, last semester, she made the decision to take one semester totally online because she had some conflicts with her work schedule and actually had to do a, quite a bit of traveling. And so that was a decision she made. This semester, she's back at Valencia face to face full time. So I think, you know, just like we make decisions in high school about what's the best fit for our children each semester, the same is true at, at the college level. Yes, definitely. You can take your, your dual enrollment all virtual. Some students were doing it during COVID. <laughs> they were completely virtual during um, during that session. So um, you definitely want to uh, also, like I mentioned, if you are applying to any college, especially senior year, if Valencia isn't even plan A, it's plan B, possibly as a senior or a senior parent, just apply, it can't hurt. We're probably at the application workshops waiving the application fee for the student anyways. Um, it's so important to make sure you have an early proactive start on your college journey, having early access to new student orientation, early access to the student portal gives you early access to scholarships that you can apply for. In addition to also applying for if you're going to a four year college, um, looking for apartments or housing. So apply for things by summer if you can for housing or apply for work study jobs in the summertime. Look for those jobs in the summertime because that's when they're hiring to have the students start for their jobs in the fall. Um, so really just start early on the senior college journey to make sure that you have access to those resources. And I apologize, I don't know if you shared this, but there is really exciting news when it comes to housing at Valencia. Yes, I was getting ready to jump into it. So I'm like, are you guys ready? So the last, Woohoo! is in 2019, Valencia College and UCF opened up a campus called the Downtown Campus, which you probably saw on our screen. Um, if I can possibly go back uh, to our campus locations. Um, so you can see here on our campus locations area, um, Downtown Campus is the campus that actually is shared UCF and Valencia College together. So what that means is that students are learning together, taking general education classes together, and any UCF student who chooses to take their classes at Downtown Campus gets the Valencia College tuition price. So they get to pay a little bit less for those general education classes if they're a UCF student, if they're picking downtown campus. Also, it's the only campus that offers housing out of all of Valencia campuses. So they're shared housing with UCF and Valencia students. Um, they do specialize in general education, associative arts, but also hospitality, culinary, and digital media. So if you're thinking of that shared experience or want a student to start at Valencia and finish at UCF all in one campus, and live on campus, downtown is the campus. <laughs> and honestly, I just dropped a link in the chat, guys. I don't say this lightly. I get to see it outside of my own office window every day, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's a great area downtown, right in the uh, thick of things where the old Amway Center used to be, right across from the school board building. And it's an excellent opportunity um, to feel like you're going away, but still be right in town, which I don't know about you, but I kind of wish that was the way my own children would be. So <laughs> um, I am dropping into the chat for you um, some information, guys, about where you're going to be able to find this session afterwards. So um, we are we typically send out a copy of the presentation once we get it from Miss Graham within a few days to everybody on the call who logged in with their email. 
But because this session was recorded, all of the main points of this session will be available on our OCPS Families YouTube channel. So please click on one of the links there and subscribe today so you can get an alert as soon as the video is posted. And it's also the place where if you missed any of our other parent academies, you can go back and check out those recordings or just be able to forward them to another parent, another family member or your child, anyone who might not have been able to attend tonight. So thank you so much to Miss Graham for her time. Let's give her a virtual round of applause, right? Um, and then also, guys, if there's anything that is just super important to you while we're waiting here, um, I will do my very best to answer any questions uh, that you have. And the, your last answer here, guys, which is when is the best time to apply to Valencia? As soon as you can now. So uh, go ahead and do that. And you should definitely do it before your senior year is over. Have a great night, guys. Bye. Thank you. Okay, any extra questions? <laughs>